I'm going to be touching. It's something I actually have used versions of in the past and seeing this configuration intrigued me and I thought I'd go and pick one up. It is a hand auger with a scotch eye on it so you can do um, basically impromptu mortise and tendon joints out in the wilderness or you know around the shop or whatever with um, limbs and branches and stuff like that so it's touted to be something you could use out in the wilderness or camping if you wanted to make a stool real quick or they show um, different videos of it making uh, fires inside of pieces of log round and whatnot. Um, I have my own beliefs on that but I'm going to keep those to myself for the moment but um, yeah let's open her up and see what we got ordered off the internet um, up one of their advertisements not off uh, Amazon or anything like that and it took about 18 days to get here so that's not bad um, it did come from overseas from China I believe it was and for 18 days for China that's that's really good most of the things I ordered from China take you know upwards of 20 30 days usually it's um, almost always 30 days in around there so um, yeah without further ado let's open her up and see what we got be honest I hadn't seen these before so I'm really interested in checking them out and kind of excited okay. nothing else in the package uh, be careful when you open it so you don't actually nick the leather in there I got the bag but not the, the sheath itself so that is it it is called an outdoor survival tool color black with the spark code um, the sheath and that on it from outside the bag, the sheath actually feels like it's a good quality. I'm so far thusly impressed. Hey, maybe not overly impressed. <laughs> yeah, it's leather-ish. Um, it's very supple. It's not something heavy-duty like you might expect it to be. Um, I guess for the money it seems probably right on the nose, but... So this is the Saker survival tool, uh, auger slash scotch eye. This is the one inch model, so both the auger and the scotch eye are one inch. Uh, one inch inside diameter and one inch outside diameter on this, so that your tenons and mortise fit together properly. Um, Welds look fairly decent on it. I mean, I'm not a professional welder or anything, but I know what I've seen. I know what I've seen work and what I've seen fail. So looks fairly decent for that, from that perspective. It's sharp. Um, the auger portion is sharp all the way up, which is nice. Some of these you, some augers and that you see, they're not. They're kind of dulled off up here, whether from use or from um, just the way they're manufactured. But this is actually sharp all the way up, which is nice to see blades are sharp a screw portion that screws into the wood to keep it in place and steady is fairly decent fairly robust it's got a decent weight to it which is nice I means it's not too chintzy has the sleeve for protecting your hands while you're using it and whatnot not overly big so it fits in your hand or whatnot you mean you're not using it for building Noah's Ark or anything like that right you're just using it to build simple things out in the bush bushcraft and whatnot maybe you might use it in your shop for quick jobs or whatever for the price of it you can it's affordable so from the unboxing part here uh, I think I'm gonna go in check it out and we'll go into a little bit of its usage uh, maybe some tips that I know from experience from doing log frame furniture beds and night tables and lamps and all that kind of stuff I've done in the past uh, I haven't had one of these to do that but I do have some experience with that so I'll um, 
include a little bit of that in the later portion of the video if you want to stick around and check it out feel free if not that's great too and uh, yeah we'll be back in a minute Depending on what you're doing with this, um, something else that is almost a necessity, a must have, is a good quality draw knife, or at least an affordable draw knife. They are worth their weight in gold if you're working with uh, logs and stuff like that, bushcraft especially. I mean, they have multiple uses just beyond that too, so um, something worth picking up. This is one of mine, it's one of my newer ones actually, so it's not well used but it has some use on it and uh, yeah definitely worth having the provided hand protection the leather sleeve that fits over the auger portion is actually quite decent it's not overly thick or robust or anything but it provides enough protection that if your hands are not going to get cut up or feel overly uncomfortable um, the velcro on it makes it pretty easy to put on and take off and whatnot it also allows you to adjust how tight it is on the auger so if you want to make it so it slides on and off uh, for faster use and whatnot it, that is um, easily done with the velcro so just back off the velcro a little bit and it'll slide on and off really easily the auger portion itself is actually decent it's sharp on all the appropriate edges um, it's not like a some of the cheaper versions I've seen of augers that are just kind of blunt and dull all the way up. This one has some bite to it, so it's not just the tip that bites, it's the whole thing that bites. And um, yeah, I mean, it's your standard auger, but for what it's designed to do and what it does, it's a, it works, so. The cutting edge of it itself for the scotch eye is a little bit different. It is not overly sharp and I was using it on a harder wood. Uh, it was dried and um, I think it was pine. It was fairly, fairly hard wood because of it being a branch and it had knots and stuff in it and it did have trouble going through that uh, given I wasn't hitting it overly hard or anything but it would probably work better on green woods and whatnot the same with the auger i found going into dry cedar was probably more difficult than i would expect um, but results may vary and of course that's also right out of the package so if you take a little bit of time to tune it up or you know if you sharpen it up a bit you'll probably have better results and um, you just have to play around with it and see which kind of woods it works best with for you and then stick with that All right, so now I've got a couple clips of me using it, uh, making a couple of mortise and tenon joints. It's just quickly done at home. I didn't schlep my ass out to the bush or anything. After that, I'm going to run through some tips and stuff that I learned making log frame furniture, log beds, end tables, night tables, lamps, that kind of thing. And uh, so if you're interested in that, stick around. Here we go. I like to pre-cut the tenon before I do much of anything else. This 
allows me to hit a stopping point so when I use the scotch eye on it or whatever I'm using to make that it doesn't split beyond there it stops right at that line and it allows me to get a very accurate seating in between the lip of the tenon and the lip of the mortise that way I can put it so the end of the tenon itself is sitting at the end of the inside of the mortise and the weight is distributed equally down the shaft of the tenon and not only on the lip. Placing the scotch eye on the top of the tenon it allows you to see how much you need to take off, how deep the cut needs to be. You want to go around the outside edge all the way and make it deep enough so that it's going to be just a little bit more than what you need so that everything falls off clean. It won't weaken the wood at all, like I said, because it'll be sitting on the top of the tenon. Give it a double check, and once you have, you figure that you have it deep enough all the way around to take off the excess, you're good to go. After you do your pre-cut to set the depth of your tenon, you just put the auger up against it. Make sure it sits right at the cutting teeth at the bottom of your cut. Hold your thumb there or whatever, make a mark with a pencil, just so you can work easier you're not going to lose your place then you get some electrical tape is what I like to use but any tape will really work and match the edge of the tape to the edge that you just marked on there from your pencil and that will allow you to make the perfect depth for your mortise every time so if you're doing multiples of them you'll hit the same mark every time and you won't have any of that sloppiness left over Just double check make sure everything lines up really well and you're good to go that's a, a pretty handy tip you won't have any sloppy connections or joints that way so check it out the wood I chose for the tenon part was actually a really dry piece I had kicking around for a walking stick and it was a little bit difficult for the scotch eye to go through. It's not overly sharp, the scotch eye portion, and there were some knots in it. Um, it worked decent enough with the pre-cut I made and as you can see it fits in fairly decently and once it was tapped it was snug snug. It wasn't moving anywhere. There was no um, movement or play at all. I actually ended up using it as a mallet later on for another piece I did so that's how good that connection actually was. Because I set the depth beforehand with the piece of tape and the pre-cut on the tenon portion um, they matched up really well and there was no issues with it being too long or too short. The tenon fit into the mortise almost perfectly. A little clean up with the Swiss Army knife and everything fit great. All right, so that's kind of my rundown on the Saker one inch survival tool, um, auger and scotch eye. I found it to be fairly sturdy. Um, it came out of the box sharp enough. It's light, it doesn't have a lot of weight to it, so you wouldn't really notice it on your belt or in your backpack or anything like that. It works, it's effective. There's no arguing that. Um, I think it could be really useful. Some of the things I found was like the sheath was okay it could be a little better um, it's kind of on the thin side but other than that I mean depends on what you're using it for I don't think it'd be your daily driver kind of thing but used occasionally you're in a backpack again or something like that it's probably all right uh, the sleeve is a nice touch to protect your hand to keep it from um, digging in getting cuts or even just being uncomfortable for long periods of time it's not obtrusive on your belt at all, so it's not going to get in the way and cause you problems going through thicker brush or moving around, getting caught on your coat and whatnot. I think if I had to point out one issue with the sheath, it would be the belt loop. It, it looks to me like it could eventually fail. It doesn't look like it's super strong. I could be wrong. I'm not an expert on that kind of stuff, but compared to other sheaths and that that I've had, it does strike me as being a potential weak point. So. Um, the mortise and tendons that it produces, they're tight. There's no arguing that. They're, it's not sloppy at all. It does a good job. The boring part, the drill bit part itself, is like most of them. It takes a little while to get to understand how it works. I mean, you're not going to be pointing it straight up and down and expecting to get a, a good drill going on because it needs to be on a little bit of an angle at points so the bottom of the hole doesn't flatten off. Other than that, 
I think it works really well. So if you understand that you need to kind of shift it from side to side to get it to dig and catch the lips that are created on the inside on the bottom of the hole, you'll have no issues with it. And again, that could be dependent on the type of wood you're using it on. So yeah, so that's basically my opinion, my thoughts on this tool. I would recommend it. I don't see it as having any issues or whatnot. And uh, I can't wait to get out there this summer and uh, use the hell out of it. So please like and subscribe. I'd love to hear your comments. If you have experiences with these tools or other ones, good or bad, if you have feedback from my videos, things you'd like to see, things you didn't like, all that kind of stuff, let me know in the comment section below. And until next time, take her easy.